back to the sweetest solvers. My name is Lisa, and this is my sweet mate Sinclair. We are running a series in which we discuss murder mysteries and conspiracies and try to get to the bottom of what really happened. In today's episode, we'll be talking about an 88-year-old mystery of the Johnson family who died in a house fire. Was it an accident? Or did someone really want them dead? Albin and Alvira Johnson had seven children and an eighth one on the way. But in April of 1933, they died in a tragic fire. But Albin was the only one who was alive. Mm -hmm. Now, when Albin was a child, well, not a child, but, you know, a young guy, uh, him and his brothers worked in Canada as loggers before coming back to the Chisago County area of Minnesota to help with the family farm. Um, so Albin met Alvira, which between them two had a 13 year old ga 13 year gap. He was 32 and he, she was 19. And um, yeah, uh, he spent a lot of money on alcohol and did not and not on their kids. On top of that, it was during the Great Depression and in the era of um, prohibition. So he wasn't a very responsible father. Yeah, him and his siblings had a past of brewing their own moonshine, getting into a lot of bar fights or like speakeasy fights, I guess you would say. Um, they did not come from the most emotionally stable background, I guess one could say. Mm -hmm. Anyways, so during this period of time, Albin was spending a lot of his money on booze. He wasn't paying attention to his children. He wasn't really working so hard to support them either. Um, Alvira was doing all of the housework, taking care of the kids, and trying to encourage her husband to do more for the family, even though he wouldn't. Um, Alvin's father, Emil, decided to throw Alvin a bone. He's, he was like, if you, if you work on the family farm, if you make profits, if you work hard, you can live on this farm, just pay me rent. Mm -hmm. Because obviously his father wanted to retire, he wanted to like, live without having to work in his old age during the Great Depression. Very understandable. Um, but as time moved on, Emil was not happy with his son's work, said, you have 10 days, and then I need you to move out because I will just, I'll just give this farm to like one of your brothers, keep it in the family, but it, you're just not doing enough. Mm -hmm. So the Johnson family packs up, puts everything in a wagon, and they went to sleep that night in different rooms of the house. The mother and the youngest baby were in the kitchen, the oldest was in the dining room, and the rest of them like slept on these old beds in the living room. And that morning, they did not wake up. There was a house fire that consumed them all, and they were all dead, except for Albin. No one knew where he was. Where was Albin? In the days prior to Alvin's disappearance and the family's death, um, Alvin actually reached out to his brother, Hank, who lent him $20. He said, well, I know, well, he didn't say this, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Basically, he gave him $20 as a deposit to make on, an, on a new home, but instead he bought eight sacks of tobacco. Which he didn't smoke. He didn't even smoke. He was a drinker, not a smoker. Mm. And who does both? Anyways, um, so this led a lot of people to think that there was foul play because in this discussion where Hank also lent him $20, Albin was telling Hank how he missed the, the good old days when they were single and they were working as loggers in Canada and just reminiscing on that, like times were so much easier back then, didn't have to worry about money and all that stuff. So obviously there was a lot of emotional distress. Mm -hmm. This family is not very emotionally stable if they keep this, keep people up and drink. Mm -hmm. Hey, that's none of my business. Um, so a lot of people believe it could be Alvin. I'm not saying it's Alvin because that's just my theory. That's what made like investigators think that he moved to Canada. Like he, like, they think that he did, he set up the fire and all that and then moved to Canada because he missed Canada and the simpler times. And right. he was in debt too, so he had and to get rid was, of the family too. Yeah, yeah there was, there was a warrant out for him, a $50 reward if anyone could find him. People were calling in from everywhere. Nothing was really 
that accurate. People were just saying it in order to get money. But then somebody in Canada said, hey, I think I sent him scrambled eggs once because some man had crossed the border like with barely any money, barely any plan, begging for food. So he, he fed him breakfast. And this man that he invited to his house was not telling him anything about his life, did not really explain much of anything of why he was there, what happened to him. So he believed it was the person that everyone was looking for. When police arrived at that like area, they still can't find him. Um, then they're thinking maybe he went to Canada, came back to the US. That also didn't help anyone really. Um, then their neighbor said, oh, I saw tire tracks in yeah. the snow, like right, bef right before the fire. And that could mean anything. That could mean anything. And then in the investigation, what do they see is tire tracks from every police officer and everyone that's on the scene. So you can't really tell the difference between the two. That's just yeah. impossible. And you know, then, you know, back then, you know, investigating like the, like, the tactics we use, the methods that we use today weren't as like advanced. Right. You know, they you know how they can like, oh, that is they didn't that's even the tracks of a Jeep or something. Like all of them look the same. Jeep you know? tracks, you know. Yeah. They're everywhere. Watch out. So in the grand jury that they held for him, he was ruled um, he was actually indicted due to absentia. But before then everyone was accusing Alvin for this murder. His father even came out and defended him. His father did feel very very responsible because obviously he, he kicked out he kicked yeah. them all out so i think there was a little bit of guilt behind that but he still defended his his son but i i don't know i feel like he, it was more of a self-righteous defending your son because like mm -hmm. defending your son also means defending your last name defending your dynasty and all that and he was a big name in the in the church yeah so that that makes sense to me why he would defend him and then Alvin's brother-in-law. Um, what was his name? Alvin's brother-in-law. Harry. Harry? Yeah. Alvin's brother-in-law, Harry, starts defending him, but like in the craziest way, he starts denouncing all of the investigators, telling them that they didn't investigate correctly and all of this, and then he thinks, he thought he saw a bone and melted glass on the scene. He's like, oh, well, glass melts at XYZ degrees and fire burns at XYZ degrees. So it must have been so hot that he just got burnt to a crisp because if you could fit the whole family in one casket, likely you just didn't find his body, sorry. So that's what the brother-in-law was saying, but then the brother-in-law just went completely bonkers, puts out this 13 page thing, publishes it and- no everything wrong with the case everything wrong with everyone and everything people just ruled him out as crazy mm. so because of this fire now the family is crazy um and their whole name is thrown through the mud yep what do you think happened please i'm interested okay so i think that Things got too rough for him. If he was already a respons irresponsible father before, like he just wanted like a break from his family. Like he can't handle it no more. Like eight kids. Eight kids. I go back too. So I think he set up the fire and dipped. Here's the thing, though. When a lot of people were investigating the bodies later, it kind of looked like they were like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. If a house burns on fire while you're asleep, why would you sleep through the fire and stay where you lie down that night? So don't you think he killed them before the fire? Yeah, then, you know, people say that there was a rifle and two pistols found. In the house. Yeah, that could have been, you know. But that wouldn't make any sense because then, once you hear someone get shot and be like, whoa. Yeah, then you would be running out the door. So then people yeah. are like, oh, what if it was poison? But like, couldn't, well, I don't know, but, but, but like, couldn't you find traces of poison or something? I don't know. I don't know either. But that kind of sounds the closest to the truth to me. I just don't understand how you could poison someone before they went to bed. Yeah. And then everyone dies in their sleep. I, just, I don't know enough about poison personally. I do think that he killed them though, for sure. Mm -hmm. He's definitely guilty. He probably 
got drunk, got very angry at his life, um, started self-evaluating, pointed fingers at his family for the blame, and was like, hmm, all my problems would be solved if I just didn't have a family. Mm -hmm. You know how I could get rid of my family? If I killed them. He did, I'm not condoning murder, but he did a good <laughs> job because it's been like 80 some, 88 years and no one knows. Well, here's another thing that was like in his favor. Um, it was the 1930s. Yeah. And there was not a lot of like technology. So I don't know. I'm not saying like, if you tried this now, like, please don't try this now. But if you tried this now, I think you, you would not be able to get away with it. Yeah. Especially since there's like those facial recognition things. You can't just run away to Canada anymore. Yeah. Because they have your face. Mm -hmm. Social media. You know, all of these things, like. There's multiple stories like this. Like, I think a couple years ago, a father did the same thing, but he hid his two daughters and his wife that was pregnant in an oil tank that he worked at. Why would you do that? Like, that's so oh, obvious. That's stupid. Exactly. But like, that makes Sorry. me so sad. Like, imagine you're married and you're like, oh, everything's fine. And then your husband tried like, to kill you. in love. <laughs> yeah, and then they tried no, to kill stop, you. No, stop, because that, that's a reason why I would not get married. Exactly. But then again, she had so many yeah. red flags. Like, she was just like, it was red flag. And she was like, y'all heard something? Like, that's the y'all heard something? <laughs> yeah. Like, he's not taking care of the family. He's, he's irresponsible, with the, irresponsible with the money. Well, I mean, Elvira kind of also had a lot of red flags. Like, angry drunk guy who's famous for getting into bar fights. But some people like that. that. Oh, and people, he's like, and he's like 13 years older than me. People like the, the bad boy until they start hitting on them or something. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. I don't get it. Everyone loves a bad boy until the bad boy hits you. Sorry. <laughs> it's kind of how that be sometimes. Mm -hmm. So we, we both agree. Oh, maybe she had daddy issues. No. <laughs> I'm not going to go there. <laughs> but we both agree Alvin's the killer. Yeah. Do you think he killed him before the fire or just killed him in a fire? I don't know. I Imagine think he's a killer. Imagine how heavy of a sleeper you have to be to sleep through a whole Or even if fire. he wasn't the killer, it has to be like his family. Because the way his brothers were going so hard, I understand that's your family. You but like Hank did it? I don't know about, I don't know like their names or I don't know like specifically who, but like they're going so hard over it. Like, yeah, I'll try to defend my siblings, but like, no. I'm not about to go crazy I'm over it. I'm not going to kill my sibling's family for him. Yeah. That's messed up. I'm not going to kill any family. Um, <laughs> nah, some people be getting on my nerves. Um, yeah. So yeah, so I guess in the end, this man had a sixth grade education. He dropped out to help with his family and all that. Yet he was still smart enough to get away with mass murder. And- I don't know about mass murder. Yeah, it was mass oh, murder. Yeah, yeah, he yeah, killed yeah. eight people. Yeah. And an embryo. Mm -hmm. He's smart enough to get away with all of that barely had an education, and then disappeared off of who knows where. Mm -hmm. Maybe he remarried. Maybe he killed himself afterwards. I don't know. And I don't really care. Yeah, he's, he's dead either way. Either way, he's dead now, hopefully. Imagine if he was still alive. Little old guy. <laughs> Maybe he killed his other family. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Thank you. Same thing like conspiracy guys, I feel like if they're like in 20, years range then I can understand putting time in, in energy into it, like John Benet. But like oh. that's that's for the next episode or something. Or some <laughs> yo John Benet I could go off on because who do you think killed John Benet? Her parents. Oh no, I think her brother killed her and then Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. Let us know what you think happened. Do you think Alvin killed the family? Do you think the family just died in a fire? Or Something Someone else. else was out to get them, you know? Who knows? I'm Sinclair. And I'm Lisa. That was one mystery solved. Join us next time to help us solve our next crime.